Good morning, everyone. Some of our other members will be joining us. Um, the American people know that as a result of the Biden administration and Democrats' failed far-left policies, the national debt just reached $33 trillion. The border crisis is raging across the country, including in my home state in New York, and inflation continues to hurt hardworking Americans, families, small businesses, farms. It's still the number one issue I hear across my district. Members of the House Republican Conference have been working tirelessly to come together to pass a 30-day continuing resolution with important policy riders to secure the border, including ending catch and release, restarting the Remain in Mexico policies of the Trump administration that were very effective, increasing detention capacity, and requiring safe third country agreements for illegal immigrants seeking asylum, as well as resuming the construction of the border wall. Joe Biden's open border policies have turned every community to a border community, devastating my home state of New York. And we know from our Texas and Southern border colleagues, this has been an existential issue for years. Importantly, the CR includes in cuts non-discretionary spending by 8%. It fully funds the disaster relief fund and includes language to give the DOD much needed flexibility for the duration of the CR. This 30-day extension allows us to continue our hard work in the appropriations process to rein in reckless spending and ensure that we are good stewards of taxpayer dollars. In addition, this week, we will also vote on a resolution condemning the unconstitutional action of New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham that suspended open carry and concealed firearms in New Mexico. This is a gun ban that deprives the citizens of New Mexico of their God-given constitutional right to bear arms. We are joined here today by some of the key negotiators and really leaders within our conference who have been working tirelessly through the weekend. They're going to continue working. Uh, Dusty Johnson, we have Chip Roy and Stephanie Bice to talk about the plan to avoid a government shutdown and secure the borders. First, I'm going to hand it over to our whip, Tom Emmer. Thank you, Elise. Last week, Speaker McCarthy directed the House committees to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Biden. This impeachment inquiry is about one thing and one thing only, and that is providing answers for the American people. Nothing more, nothing less. Americans gave our House Republican majority a mandate to provide transparency and accountability, and that's exactly what we've done over the last eight months. Chairman Comer has shown that the Biden family engaged in a disturbing pattern of corruption that included selling government access to foreign adversaries like China. Throughout our investigations, we found that President Biden repeatedly lied to the American people about his involvement in his family's corrupt business dealings. We also discovered that then Vice President Biden likely used his official office to coordinate with Hunter Biden's foreign business partners. Opening a formal impeachment inquiry will give our committees the full congressional authority needed to get the American people the answers they deserve. And if they uncover evidence of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors, then and only then will the next steps towards impeachment proceedings be considered. I fully support Speaker McCarthy's commitment to follow the facts wherever they lead and ensure that no one, not even President Biden, is above the law. Elise? Sure. Oh. We're going to go to Dusty Johnson next, then we'll hear from Chip Roy and Stephanie Bice. Dusty. The speaker often says that we need to focus, uh, the Republicans need to focus on what unites us and what divides Democrats. And as the six negotiators got together, it was very clear to us that what unites not just this conference, but what unites America is the unmitigated disaster at the southern border. It is indefensible. The policies of this administration have made our country less safe. For everything, there is a season. And right now, now is the time where Republicans in the House can advance a plan that will secure the border. Now, I know because this is Washington, D.C., we have a tendency to get wrapped around the axle on process stories and about individuals that aren't quite sure they're to yes yet. We have seen this drama play out week in and week out of the last nine months. Somehow, Republicans, uh, in almost every single instance, have ended the week with successes. I think we are well positioned to do that again. Uh, not every hour of the next couple, three days will be easy, but I would tell you progress continues. There are people that I've spoken to 
initially who were skeptical about the pl about the plan, about the framework, uh, largely because of misinformation, are starting to understand what the vote Thursday will really be about. On Thursday, I'm going to vote to cut the government, and I will vote to secure the border. I would imagine that would be a very hard vote for other Republicans uh, to break with. And I think ultimately that's going to put the pressure on this White House, on Leader Schumer. If they want open borders and a closed government, then they can try to go sell that to the American people. But our plan is better for America. Well, thank you, Elise. And I want to thank Stephanie and Dusty, Byron and others that were willing to sit down and do the hard work that our Democrat colleagues refuse to do. The truth is, there's a debate going on within the Republican conference and among Republicans in Washington that is the actual debate the American people want us to have to try to reach consensus for solutions that will actually address the problems that are affecting their lives. Our Democrat colleagues refuse to do that. They're not actually serious about addressing the concerns the American people have every day. So sure, we have some robust debates within our conference. They're the debates we should be having across this town that our Democrat colleagues refuse to engage in. So what we have before us right now is legislation that will cut spending to non-defense, non-veteran discretionary spending. In simple speak, the federal bureaucracy that is, not, that is neither defense nor veterans by 8%. If my conservative colleagues want to vote against that, go explain that. Go explain that you're voting against a 30-day 8% cut to the federal bureaucracy while having a piece of legislation attached to it that is the strongest border legislation ever passed, and it was passed out of this House Republican conference. Again, to my so-called conservative colleagues, go explain that. Go explain how you oppose Border Security, H.R. 2, strongly vetted, passed out of the Judiciary Committee, passed by House Republicans, that is a dream bill for dealing with the crisis at the border where I've got in Texas 2,000 people at Eagle Pass yesterday, where I spent August sitting on panels with moms and dads who have lost their loved ones to fentanyl poisonings, where I met with countless law enforcement that are overrun in Texas, communities getting overrun, and now our colleagues in New York are seeing what that looks like. And if I have to watch another migrant getting sold into the sex trafficking trade or see another federal opinion about a stash house in Fort Worth, Texas with a little girl in it that the father is being ransomed for money so that his little girl doesn't get abused because of what this country is doing with an open border? No, I didn't come here for second place. I didn't come here to preen and posture on Twitter. I came here to figure out how to save this country for my kids and grandkids. Because I promise you, I didn't survive cancer and I don't skip out of town away from my family to be here for posturing and for rhetoric. And I'm proud of these guys for standing up and we're going to continue to fight and do what the Democrats refuse to do. Stephanie. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be standing with my colleagues and that worked so hard over the last few days to put this package together. Um, I will remind you that this is not perfect, but it, uh, we won't, don't want to let perfect be the enemy of the good. And the reality is this bill does what the American people have been asking us to do. In the last two and a half years, seven million illegals have crossed into the United States. That is more than the entire eight years of the Obama administration and the four years of the Trump administration combined. We have to address the border and we have to do it now. Some in the conference want to see other issues addressed. Happy to have that conversation. But the focus right now needs to be two things, continuing to fund government and securing the southern border. And the continuing resolution that we are putting forward today or have put forward will do that very thing. We cannot continue to spend uh, recklessly like we've seen over the last two and a half years. This will address the spending but it also protects our military and our veterans. Look, 
I know a lot of focus has been put on the House over the last several weeks, particularly when it comes to this continuing resolution. But I think it's mindful to, to mention that the Senate's not doing anything either. They've laid this out uh, at the feet of House Republicans and asked us to put something forward. And as such, we are doing so. And I want to reiterate what Chip said. This is the most conservative CR ever put forward. And for some of my colleagues to walk away from continuing to fund government, from securing the border, from cutting spending, and for protecting our vets is a mistake. Thank you. We will now go to questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, how do you convince Republicans like a Ralph Norman or others who don't even want to look at the CR because they don't believe in the idea of a CR and just want to go to the 12 appropriation bills? He told me last night he's fully expecting the government to shut down, and there are others who don't want to even touch the well, we had a very productive conversation among many members from different parts of our conference who are getting in a room, working through differences, and are committed to finding a solution on behalf of the American people. And look, I respect all my colleagues in this conference. They have very strong beliefs. They are working hard to represent their constituents. But we are united in our commitment to cut spending that has been reckless under single-party Democrat rule and to secure the border. So there are conversations ongoing. And I think what was very productive about the conference meeting we just have is there are already members huddled, negotiating, working out these details, and I know my colleagues here today are going to be continuing to lead that discussion. Yes? Can I ask you a sure. <laughs> Chip? Um, you were in terms of policy wonk in mind to the, the framework of the Freedom Caucus side coming in and dealing with this. Um, Donald's is a big communicator, Harry's the leader. Why were you guys not able to pull more Freedom Caucus members in support of this? What is the uphill battle? They talk about the numbers, they talk about this, but they, they walked out of that phone call very quickly discounting it. Uh, my colleagues, uh, you'd have to ask them that question and get their answer to it. I mean, look, I, I'm standing here telling you I do not believe that it is a appropriate or sustainable position to say that we're not going to support legislation that would cut government 8% while securing our border. Again, policy matters. What we're seeing at the border matters. It is an overwhelming issue for the people across this country. So that would be my message uh, to them. And, and look, but it's not without at least some point, right, about figuring out what's next. You mentioned my colleague, Mr. Norman. I don't want to speak for him, but I think some of my colleagues uh, want to see where's this going to go? What, what happens at the end of 30 days? That's the conversation we're having right now about where things go. We've got to come together and move forward uh, spending bills that will unite the conference. My belief, as I've put forward here, without any shame whatsoever, is that a piece of legislation that will secure the southern border, reducing the size of the government for 8 percent over 30 days. And by the way, run alongside a Department of Defense bill that is a strong bill, if we were to pass it in a package as we would recommend doing, that would meaningfully ensure that our defense is funded, our troops are paid, but it would focus on the mission first instead of the social engineering going on at defense, destroying morale and recruiting. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you. So some of, the, some of those that are saying that they're leaning no on the CR have also said they haven't even read the bill yet. Yesterday I spoke with Andrew Clyde, for example. Can I get your reaction to that and what do you think of people who are kind of dismissing it without really? I mean, you know, every member is going to take the time to look at this bill to make sure that they go through it with a fine tooth comb. That's why it's important that we continue to abide by our rules. Unlike the Democrats, we put the bills out there for members to take the time to read. And the good news is, unlike what Democrats typically pass, which are thousand dollar bills, this bill is less than 200 pages. So I know members are uh, judiciously going through the bill, and I'm optimistic that there's going to be great conversations and productive conversations. You know, when we do these press conferences, it's always at the beginning of the week, and the questions are always the same. How are you going to get this done? We're consistently underestimated. We are committed to working with our colleagues all across this conference. And it was a very productive conference. All right, last question. Yes, sir. Can you give us any idea what kind of timeline we're looking at here? You know, the speaker said we're going to continue working through this process, and if that includes staying through the weekend, we are going to do that. Uh, but as you saw, the floor schedule that's been put out by the majority leader's office, we're going to continue working through and having those productive conversations. This is about standing up on behalf of the American people, cutting spending to rein in the reckless spending we've seen under Joe Biden, and securing the border, which is an existential threat, and it's a direct result of the failed open border policies of Joe Biden. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody.
Thursday, there's a vote? Uh, according, yeah. The schedule, yes, thank you.